Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracy's The Populist Dialogues. My name is David Delk and I host this series of half-hour weekly cable television programs brought to you from the studios of Portland Community Media here in Portland, Oregon. Today we are going to have uh, David Kopp. Uh, David is the chief spokesperson for Move to Men. He formerly was an, a candidate for attorney general running on the Green Party candidate uh, for attorney general in Texas. Uh, he also ran as a Green Party candidate for uh, the U.S. president in 2004. And so welcome to the program again. Well, thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be back here on uh, this program. And I do want to remind your viewers, the only reason you're hearing a conversation like this where we're actually telling the truth about who is actually running this country is because you're watching a community rate or pardon me a community media source in other words this is non corporately filtered news information and analysis so i really want to underscore how pleased i am to be having this conversation and how you the viewer should really contextualize the fact that you're hearing these kinds of conversations precisely because we the people are using our own opportunity for media to talk to one another i think that's a very important yeah. point and actually you were here two months ago maybe three months ago and why are you back? Well, I'm back for a couple of reasons. One, because uh, Portland is, in fact, a, a hotbed of progressive populism. Uh, this is a place where we, the people, are beginning to work together. Uh, the national coalition that I represent, Move to Amend, uh, has found that Portlanders are excited about the idea of a people's movement that will actually take our country back from these corporate hooligans who have hijacked it. Because, David, the reality is that today, these unelected and unaccountable corporate CEOs, they're not merely exercising power. They are ruling us. As surely as masters once ruled their slaves or kings once ruled subjects, unelected and unaccountable corporate CEOs are ruling us because they're making the fundamental public policy decisions that affect all of our lives. Can you just give us a, a concrete example of how that works? Sure. Here's one. I mean, every one of the folks who are watching us today are eating genetically mutated organisms. Uh, why? Are they choosing to do that? Well, who made the decision? Well, we know who made the decision. Monsanto Corporation, Archer Daniels Midland Corporation, Pioneer Hybrid Corporation, big, huge mega corporations made the decision to put GMOs into our public food supply. Yet they made that public policy decision and claimed that it was a private corporate decision, made it behind boardroom doors so that we the people were not only not allowed to have any meaningful participation in that decision, we didn't even know the decision was being made mm -hmm. until after the fact. Mm -hmm. And we could do the same thing with our transportation choices, our health care options, uh, whether or not this country goes to war or not. All of those big picture decisions are usually being made behind corporate boardroom doors, and we are presented with an array of consumer products. Choose between Coke or Pepsi. Choose between paper or plastic. Choose between uh, this kind of entertainment system or not. We're given consumer choices, but we are rarely given the opportunity to actually help create the institutions in which we live. And that, David Delk, would be real democracy when we are meaningfully participating in the decisions that affect our lives. Meaningful participation, doesn't it really happen at the local level? Can it ever really happen at the national level? Well, I would tell you this. I think that our power is much greater at the local level. Wherever we live, work, and play is where we have the most power. Uh, it's where we have the most political power. It's where we have the most economic power. It's where we have the most social power. So you're absolutely right that at the local level is where the real action is. But I have not given up on the idea of the, the state and even the nation. Uh, I think that the United States of America could be a more democratic place. It could be a more progressive place. It could be a more sustainable place. But it will not be that place as long as we allow these huge corporations to hijack our legal system, our political system, and in fact, to hijack our very culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and when, the, when our nation was founded, our founding fathers, uh, they gave the right to regulate corporations to states. In fact, it's even deeper than that. It's not simply the right to regulate uh, uh, the corporation is given to the states. Uh, the Constitution is a profound document, David, because it is a form of, it describes limited government, and it also describes that 
we the people as human beings, citizens of the United States, have core fundamental rights that can never be violated. Uh, the Constitution does not create rights. Mm -hmm. The Constitution recognizes rights, pre-existing rights, rights that you have as a human being. Uh, and that's why, and I hope we'll talk about this in a bit, but that's why it's so important uh, when the Supreme Court, in an act of supreme judicial iron, uh, activism, says that, oh no, corporations should be also considered persons with constitutional rights. It completely perverts the democratic republic. The, the opportunity for we the people to govern ourselves is stripped away. And I do want to get back to this idea that in the founding, uh, it was very clear that Corporations were created by state government through a, a chartering process. That charter was typically only five to seven years. Um, and before the privilege of incorporating was granted, uh, the corporation could only do a very specific thing. And that specific thing had to be a public need that was articulated and identified that was not being met by either existing governmental regulation or governmental agencies or by private enterprise and if at any moment the corporation was found to be acting outside the public interest in any way by i don't know say destroying the ecosystem of the gulf of mexico mm -hmm. or killing miners in west virginia or spewing toxic and poisons into the air that we all breathe or the water that we ought to drink if any of those things that these big mega corporations do day in and day out today that corporate charter would be revoked the corporate death penalty was imposed on corporations. So I'm not saying it was the land of milk and honey. I mean, slavery existed, women were oppressed, workers were being taken advantage of. But David, in the founding of this country, the corporation as a social construct, as an instrument, was very tightly controlled and appropriately regulated to ensure that the will of the people well, it was not violated. But the problem, of course, in the founding of this country was not everybody got to be a person. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Hey, and so I, I, I think you have said that about five to seven percent of the population in when the nation was, was founded were actually regarded as citizens. So who was excluded? Well, that's right. I mean, I think that I hope that your viewers already know what uh, what I'm about to say. And maybe you'll like to uh, to repeat the characteristics with me, even as you're watching. Let's see if you can do it. In order to actually be a legal person uh, in the founding of this country in 1789, when the Constitution was ratified, you had to be white, you had to be male, you had to be a property owner. I bet most of you could actually do that off the top of your head, but think about the implications. What it meant was that if you were not white, male, property owner, you were not actually fully a, legally, a legal person. So in a very real way, for all the beautiful rhetoric associated with the founding of this country, uh, that rhetoric rings hollow because we know it's a founding violence. It's a founding violence against the indigenous who were here first and subject to intentional deliberate genocide. It's an original founding violence against the slaves, uh, those Africans who were enslaved and brought at the point of a spear or the barrel of a gun and forced to build this country. Uh, it's a founding violence against women because it's not just that women couldn't vote, David. It's that women had no rights. Women couldn't own property. They were property. Um, and it's a founding violence against most white men because most of the white men who were here in this country, in the founding of this country, uh, were not actually fully vested citizens because they didn't own enough property. I think that the important thing to remember is the principles of the creation myth of this country are profound. They are real. The principles are there, but they were never lived up to. It is our job in this generation to do what prior generations have done, which is to engage in social movement building to make the country live up to its promise. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. said that the civil rights movement was trying to cash the check that was written in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. I think that's what we ought to be about mm -hmm. today, too. You know, every great social movement from the abolition of slavery, the women's suffrage movement, the trade union movement, the civil rights movement, all of these movements have been, at their core, democracy movements. Why? Because they were about ensuring that more people had power. You know, and I actually want to be part of a progressive populist movement that makes real the promise of a democratic republic in the United States of America. Excellent. Good. One of the things that I notice is when you describe what the original citizens were, 
or, or what their characteristics were. Those are not characteristics of corporations at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, and I'm glad you bring us back to this point, David. I know that the in incredible introductory footage that uh, you have here for the uh, Populist Dialogues involves a play, uh, a little political theater that you and your colleagues from the Alliance for Democracy did here in Portland to demonstrate the audacity of the Supreme Court in its most recent uh, example, a ruling that corporations are persons with inherent constitutional rights. Uh, that's because in order to, uh, to legalize and justify the continual oppression and, and, and uh, destruction that corporations are playing and to overturn laws that attempt to control their harm and abuse, uh, the court has granted the idea, they literally created out of whole cloth this legal doctrine that a corporation should be considered the same thing as a human being with inherent constitutional rights. It's of course not true. A corporation is a business, uh, a for-profit corporation is a business, a not-for-profit is a collection of individuals who have come together to do some certain thing. I have nothing against uh, business corporations, I have nothing against not-for-profit corporations, but I'm saying that the idea of people coming together to either do business or uh, to engage in, in some other charitable pursuit, that new entity that's formed has not all of a sudden been endowed with inherent inalienable rights. They have not created a new human being. And to say otherwise is absurd, it's ridiculous, and it's important because that is the doctrine that is the linchpin for how the small ruling elite have hijacked our country They've hijacked our institutions, they've hijacked our very government, and they are using the legal system to legalize that theft. Mm -hmm. And so you and Move to Amend are advocating amending the Constitution, perhaps in one amendment, or perhaps in a series of amendments, uh, eliminating corporate, corporate personhood. Yes, uh, because remember, David, that this idea of corporate personhood, or stated specifically corporations, claiming the constitutional rights that are only available to human persons. This doctrine was created by the Supreme Court and implemented by the judiciary. Uh, and in doing so, the court overturned democratic legislation. In other words, laws that had already been created. We don't see a way out of being able to fix the and correct the error that the court made uh, without going through a, an amendment process. I mean, you can't legislate, we can't uh, go to our legislators and make a new law because the court will simply overturn that law. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty clear that we need to do uh, what the abolitionists did and what the women's suffrage movement did and correct the court's horrendous mistake. And in doing so, David, we will not, it's not just a legal strategy, it's also a movement strategy. We need to be engaging our friends and neighbors in this conversation. We need to be going to uh, pool halls and bowling alleys. We need to go to political forums and asking the question of people who claim that they want to represent us. Hey, candidate, do you believe that corporations are persons with constitutional rights? If not, will you join us in a, in a movement to amend the Constitution to correct the court's error? Because, David, if anybody, whether they're running for Soil and Conservation District or U.S. Congress or President of the United States, if they're not willing to stand with us, we the people, uh, on this issue. It is the central issue of the day. Who will rule? We the people are these large corporations. If a candidate is not willing to get on the right side of that issue, I say they don't represent me. It, it would appear that uh, a lot of people understand this when it's presented to them, but we don't. Uh, I think most people don't think that this is something that can be changed. It's part of the world as it exists. Uh, it has existed this way forever? Uh, well, first of all, it hasn't existed it this hasn't, way forever. No. Uh, remember that the, for the first uh, 75 years of this country, corporations were very tightly controlled to begin with. I mean, they could, the charter only lasted five to seven years. They could only do specific things that they were granted to be done. The corporate charter to be created had to actually go uh, be passed by the entire legislature. Um, and uh, corporate charter revocation proceedings were initiated any time a corporation acted outside the public interest. So that's one, that's reality. Mm -hmm. That's not just the Green Party's platform on how to deal with corporations, although it is that. It's, <laughs> it's also our own history. So we're saying let's return to our history. 